You see, one of the things that uh, you have to understand, especially for Nairobi, and let me not speak about the other county assemblies, Nairobi has a lot of interest. And um, if you really ask anyone, why were you being thrown out? Nobody will give you an answer anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's the most interesting part of the whole story. But the good thing is that we came and we just bonded again with the same uh, honorable members. And uh, in that few uh, two years that I was there with them, we were able to now restructure properly the assembly, uh, rebuild the foundations of uh, their human resource, and restructure stuff. Uh, as uh, uh, Chairman was saying, we normally call him Chairman. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that um, you'd find uh, uh, one person, I mean, your papers, when you look at uh, the person who is uh, manning your HR, you have a person who has a PhD in HR, who has worked in uh, the national government, but the boss is a person who has a diploma and uh, just because they knew each other at the time they were employing each other. So when you restructure that in merit, because you take everyone to an interview and you restructure, uh, you find so many things happening. And uh, many people would wonder, why would I do that? But it's because, uh, you see, the moment you appreciate the technical team that you have, just like in parliament, it is important to put merit so that everyone respects each other, so that you don't find uh, uh, what has been hap happening in national government, where you have someone who was just employed yesterday, does not have experience. You have someone who has worked for 30 years, has experience, is the right technical person and with papers, but you become their boss. And so they kill, they kill the service completely. You find civil servants not performing, not that they can't perform, because they are disappointed that indeed you found me into a grid and now you come in and you become a boss and a very ruthless boss. I would tell you, we have uh, some stuff. I would look and wonder uh, if you can perform this way and you are a boss and this is how you treat others. And it's a privilege. And that is one thing that every Kenyan, I think, we've reached a point where you feel when you, when they are looking for a job, they're very good. The moment they get a job, you turn around and become a very different person, yeah. and it's very disappointing. Mm. So those are some of the things. So for me, I think I'm proud. By the time uh, I was leaving, why I left, I know I've never told anyone. Mm. I was not supposed to impeach Sonko. It was not my duty that I was given the speakership to come one day to impeach Tongo. No, it was none of my business. So I realized, do I really want to impeach Tongo? It's, it's not me. Let me leave and somebody else will come and do this. Because I just asked myself, really? Fine, we've had our own issues. And we never quarreled with him, by the way, never. Even to date, if you ask, never, by the way. So why did you leave? Uh, I, because? It was none of my business to impeach him as a speaker, no. And I would not have gone to do a job that I know this is not, I mean, it's none of my business. And we were just doing things in terms of haunting each other. Well, well, and it, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Yeah, so I asked myself, am I supposed to do all the dirty duties? I've done enough. I think it's time to leave before <laughs> you come and do the last dirty duty that will come to haunt you for nothing. Stephen, did you, you know? let me ask you